Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a Pen 545 Graphite Series reel. And this one comes with a special story and uh, it's really heartfelt and I really do appreciate this. So I thought I would share this with you. Uh, if you don't want to listen to my story, just go ahead about three or four minutes. You'll see how I start to take the reel apart. But it says, I hope you find this letter in the reel well. You may be baffled with a mysterious package from Japan. I am a Japanese fisherman and a fan of your YouTube videos. Let me tell you my story. I had been in New York City from 2001 to 2014, and during that period I became fond of the style of American fishing. When I came back to Japan in 2014, I started a bilingual fishing blog called American Saltwater Lures Can Catch Japanese Fish. I used, I used to primarily use spinning reels such as the pen torque, and a few years ago I discovered the fun of using pens old conventional style reels like the Jigmaster, Surfmaster, and Silver Beach. Then I discovered your YouTube channel. Your videos are great help to me in the service of those uh, who use those conventional reels. Even when I don't own a reel, you show how to service it on your video, and I can enjoy that video. The other day I found a Pen 545GS on sale at one of the Japanese online used tackle markets. It was not expensive, and I bought it. When the reel arrived, I found it almost new, and I couldn't find any scratch. The reel might not have been used at all. Since then, I have used the reel only a few times. It's an excellent reel, but I started feeling it's too big for me and for my application. I didn't feel I would be, keep using that 545GS, so I decided to part with it. However, I can't find any fishing friend of mine who could get interested in the reel, so I wondered how to part with it. Then I watched your Pen 555GS video. You said that the GS series is one of your favorites. It is. <laughs> and you said that the 525 is like a holy grail for you. So I came up with this idea. Please accept the 545 GS as a gift from one of your fans. I don't think I will use it as often as I should, and I can't find a better owner. I can't tell you how humble and uh, how overwhelming it is to get a letter like that and to, uh, to hear the folks that watching the videos and appreciating what it is that uh, I am doing. So with that then, let's uh, get into the video. You'll hear my intro again and uh, we'll get started on showing you how to take this reel apart. And a very heartfelt and sincere thank you to Masha Hiro who uh, had wrote that wonderful letter and had sent me this beautiful reel. I will treasure it and I will use it. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and we're back again doing our pandemic projects. And that's keeping me indoors, but it's keeping me busy, that's for sure. And uh, today we're going to do one that I previewed a little bit a uh, while ago in terms of the projects that came into my shop. This is the Pen 545. It's the, the GS, the graphite. And um, circa 19, uh, 2005, maybe, somewhere in there, is just as these things were getting transitioned over to being made in China. This one does say Pen USA, so it's probably the last of the breed there. I like these. They're big reels in a lightweight frame, capable of handling big fish. So um, we're going to take this apart. We'll show you how it's made, how to service it if you have one of these, and uh, a little bit about you know the construction behind it if it's something that you're thinking about in terms of purchasing uh, this particular reel. So uh, this one came all the way from Japan. Wow. I... Uh, don't usually see the uh, reels come in, although I love the, the folks and the attention that my channel garners worldwide. But quite honestly, the postage and the shipping charges and all of that really is quite uh, extraordinary for the, uh, the service that needs to be done on this. And that's one of the reasons why I do what I do in terms of putting these out there on the uh, on YouTube and the like, it's because I want these things, I want to show folks how to maintain their reels, even uh, if you can't uh, physically send them to me. So, of course, if you want to send them to me, I do repairs by mail, and certainly you can connect with me by uh, sending me an email on the business card that follows, uh, but that's not the primary purpose of why I do these. I do these to show folks how to do it yourself. This one's kind of interesting. The Defiance, the Warfare, and the Rival 
all kind of take their cues from this reel. They were all somewhat around the same time. Uh, the pen has moved on from those reels since. Uh, now you got the Squall and the Fathom and some of the others, but this was that generation. And again, it's, I would say early to mid-2000s. Uh, I think in 2005, 2006, they started shipping production to China on a lot of these, so uh, you kind of get a mix there. Big old burring in here. I, uh, not a series of tension washers, just kind of a straight uh, cap that uh, drives in. And um, a couple of things uh, to note as we're doing all of this. One, I use a parts tray. That's what's in front of me right now. It's the bottom of a milk jug. Uh, secondly, I wear a, a protective glove just in case there's something nasty inside that I don't want to get all over my hands. And then finally, uh, I take pictures. Uh, now, one of the things I always recommend doing is going to the internet and getting this schematic. And that's kind of how I can tell you that it's related to the rival, rival and the warfare. So when I get the schematics, easy enough. Uh, these are available at mysticparts.com. And uh, just go in and pick your reel and uh, uh, they have a block there for you to go see the schematic in case you want to order. You can also order parts there if they're broken. So uh, I would recommend that you go do that for any reel that it is that you're servicing. Now in addition to that, uh, I like to take the pictures like the videos that I'm doing here to uh, at key points in case you get a little mixed up. Easy enough to do uh, and it's not always logical in terms of how these things come back together so I always recommend that you take the pictures. I just uh, absentmindedly put Put the first screw into my basket and then lo and behold the screws are different sizes and I, I know I say that a lot I like to lay them out on my desk so I know which ones go where but sure enough uh, the top screw over here is shorter and that's what you want to do if you notice that the screws coming out shorter you just want to make a note as to where that location was there you go so kind of north and south are short screws east and west, the ones going into the crossbars, are longer screws. Make that note so that you don't mess it up on the way back in. All right, there's two more screws here that hold the case on. They're kind of hidden. If you're not paying attention to them, uh, you'll say, gee, why isn't this case coming off? Well, that's why it's not coming off. It's that it's uh, kind of stuck. So uh, Masahito sent this one in from Japan. Hopefully the next time this one needs service, he'll be able to do it himself by kind of looking at the, uh, the schematic and the video that I did. And uh, hopefully that provides him the guidance he needs to uh, get it done in the future. All right, these two are black screws. They're hard to confuse with the other two. And now this whole case should come up. There we go. Oops. Right, this is why I say it's related to the, um, uh, the warfare. It's got a, uh, a case that's built on the inside of the case as opposed to one that's traditionally been found on the gear side plate itself. So we're just going to clean this up a little bit. There's just some, some grease and the like in here that needs to be done. This is kind of interesting. It has a double eccentric spring. Note the locations of that. Some of you may be have this reel and uh, you opened it up and one of these springs flew out and you can't figure out for the life of you how it goes, well, there you go. Living and in color, if you will. So while I'm doing this, I want to thank our first responders, and in this case, worldwide. I mean, this pandemic is not limited to the U.S., although we certainly have our, our share of all of the issues here. But uh, to anybody who's uh, putting their life on the line on a daily basis, help uh, combat this uh, deadly virus. Well, thank you for everything that it is that you're doing to, to uh, help keep us safe. And uh, whether that's healthcare, EMT, uh, government, essential employees, uh, the folks that are working on our supply chain, all of the folks that are doing what needs to be done to keep whatever semblance of normality we have uh, in place as we go through this. All right, just took off the two big springs. They're on the yoke. Notice that. The reason I say that is I can't tell you how many times I get a reel in. Let's see if we can't just pull this off. Easy. Well, you're going to have to pull the main gear off first. Easy enough. I get a reel in like this because they're thinking that they're working on a reel 
that uh, is the old school. And they flip everything around. And then they tell me the spool won't turn. Well, it's because everything's backwards, right? So you almost have to climb inside that traditional setup that Penn has in your mind and reverse look out, look out towards it as opposed to uh, inward. So take the pictures, look at the schematic. These are beautiful gears. Somebody asked me why this is one of my favorite uh, reels, and I think the answer is pretty obvious. Look at the size and the strength of these gears. We have the HT100 drag system inside of this, and we have a nice strong um, gearing and pieces you know, made to manufacture. So that's uh, why I would rate it high. But also, it's a lighter reel because of the graphite. So it's not like you're, you're working with the, the uh, Penn Senator 3.0 or something that's a lot heavier. And if you're uh, fishing all day with it, well, it's going to take its toll on your, on your hands and on your arm strength. We don't need to remove the clamp down, which is holding in the, the shaft. This is not the bridge sleeve of the other pens where you have to pull that off to lubricate the post. So you can just leave that as it is. You don't have to take off the anti-reverse dog. We'll show you how to reset that when we're going to put this back in. This has got a, uh, I believe that's probably, yep, that's loose by itself, so we can take that off. And this has got a, uh, a rectangular or oval kind of a look to it. So what you're going to do is you're going to put that on, pull your main, your anti-reverse dog out of the way. and find the flat spots on this gear sleeve. I'm doing a dance because that gear sleeve keeps turning on me here. There we go. And that's how you set your anti-reverse dog. Fairly straightforward, fairly easy. All right, there was a washer on top of that. I'm gonna go ahead and put that hard washer on before we do anything else. And then we're gonna go back and take this jack and again think of this almost in the reverse of how you would be doing a, a traditional senator or a long beach or, or one of those reels everything comes out so instead of those points facing in they face out and I guess the hardest part of this whole reel assembly is when you go to match the case you have to get the stud of this eccentric into that hole in the jack it takes a little practice, but eventually you do get it. This is nice and solid. I think this is a stainless gear. You want to check all of the teeth to make sure that they're uniform, not chipped or cracked. In this case, this gear is clean, but if, uh, if you found some uh, uh, grease in there that had dried, then uh, what you want to do is you certainly you want to clear that and clean it up before you go any further. All right, I've cleaned off the yoke. So we're going to go ahead and get the grease back on this. Doesn't matter which side the gear mounts to, but understand that this is where the spool is going to go in. There's a shoulder on that spool, and you need to make sure that this indentation here is facing to the spool side. If you don't do that, like I said before, you're going to find that you uh, have the uh, non-functioning uh, part there. All right, once you put that there, you want to turn that so that you get it mated to the spool so that you don't have any, any room inside here. If you've got a, an eighth of an inch or whatever, this did not seat with the spool. We'll get to the spool in a moment, but we want to take care of this side first. There was some grease on the back end of this main gear, so we're going to take that out. We're also going to go take that last of the HT100 washers out. Do the same thing here. Inspect the teeth. Again, they're dry. So we're going to want to make sure that we get the grease on that. And I'm using a pen precision reel grease here. Not because it's a pen reel, but because it's a fishing reel. And I, you want to go use fishing reel grease there. So. Uh, Pen makes a nice product, and I use it on all the fishing reels. It's convenient. I have never had a problem with it. A lot of folks ask about aftermarket greases and the like, like hot sauce and and the others. And uh, I can't say anything bad about them. I just 
guess I'm in my comfort zone with pen, it works, so I use it. Okay, we've got it all greased up there, so now we can slide that back on top and we can mesh it with the pinion gear, which was on top here. Now we have those HT100 washers. As long as you can see the cross hatch on these washers, they're in good condition. They don't need to be replaced. We have three washers, we have three metals, and we have a cap or a tension washer. And uh, this is kind of the way they lay out. The two round ones go on each side. The one that is thicker, you're going to notice that you have two, a thinner and a thick. The one that's thicker is the top one. And then you have an eared washer in the middle. The round washers are called keyed washers, and the eared washer is called, well, an eared washer. Uh, I use Cal's Universal Drag Grease on this now. If you don't have that, go ahead and use your fishing wheel grease. But this one's designed specifically for drags, so I do use it. I dip it into that uh, container, I spread it so it has a nice even coat on it, and then I wipe off the excess. Now the idea with this grease is not, uh, it's not going to increase drag tension or anything like that. All it's going to do is keep those drag washers flexible. All right, first through the, the uh, round washers go in. We're going to do that again. That's the thinner one. Remember, the thick one goes up top. We're going to do that again. We'll wipe it all in. And then we'll take off the excess. Place that in. And now the middle washer goes in, and that's the one that has the ears on it. And if you found that there was some corrosion or dirt or dried grease on these, by all means, you're going to be cleaning these washers off before you do that, but in this case, not necessary. We'll do that one more time. We'll get that grease on there, spread it around, use the paper towel to take off the excess, place that into the center. And then we have the thicker washer, which goes up top. Now, if you were getting confused at this point, you could always go back to your um, schematic Take a look at it and make sure that you have that right. This is where we're working right now. We're working in this section here. Okay, then we've got this bell washer or a tension washer. Point goes up, the cone goes upside. Then we have this small collar or gear ferrule or post ferrule or whatever they may choose to call that. And then we have the bearing. I haven't done anything with the bearing spinning nicely. I'm just going to oil that bearing. You can oil or grease it. I tend to oil. I'm just going to put my finger over that and run it through so that it works its way in. I'm going to go up top with that. So that's the setup for the gear side of this reel. Now we have that stud there. I like to generally bring that stud to the up position. And this is a, a visual kind of a thing. So you're going to start by putting this on, and then you're going to look to try and make sure that you align. And then you can work, if you're, if you're not sure if you're aligning properly, work a little bit with that. It's not, uh, this one did not meet. So I'm going to move that down just a little bit. We'll do it again. There we go. When you heard that little, that's, uh, that's when you know that you're in. Now I can take the four of those screws that were the side plate screws. Oops, see, I just, there is the value of that parts tray. I left my two springs off that yoke. I looked in there to grab the screws and I found out that I had a whoops moment there. Let's see if we can get this back on. We should be able to because I didn't disturb either of those now. Yep, we should be in. And we got it. I'm just testing right now. Just I should be in free spool here. And then I should have movement there when I'm not. Okay, four screws. Remember what we said north and south are short screws, and I'm gonna start with them. And I do like to go in opposing directions rather than in a circular motion when I go to put these screws in. The reason I like to do that is it keeps the tension even on the reel as you uh, as you work your way around. And then the two long screws belong to those cross posts, so we're going to go ahead and put those in. Okay. 
So if you're liking what you're seeing, I'd ask that you subscribe to my channel. I, uh, it helps my channel and uh, it helps me keep bringing you these videos. And if you do subscribe, I ask you to hit the notifications. That way you'll see the videos as I post them. And during the pandemic, I've been trying to post these on a daily basis. So don't miss any of these things if you're enjoying this or if it's giving you some kind of escape from this craziness we call the pandemic. So uh, I do appreciate uh, you watching. And uh, if you could subscribe, I would certainly appreciate that. If you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, uh, leave them in the comment section. I do try to respond to them all. I got to admit, it's taking a lot more time than it did when I first started. But you know, we're over 10,000 subscribers now. And I do get a lot of questions. And I do try to answer them. And it doesn't have to be about this reel. It can be that uh, you're stuck on a particular reel. And in some cases, I've got questions like, where do I get parts for an Okuma reel? Or uh, I get, just got one in today. I, I need a handle screw for a Shakespeare. Where do I find that? And uh, somebody else had asked about uh, a drag knob for a Quantum. Uh, so if, you, if you're trying to having trouble sourcing parts, uh, leave it in the comments. So if I can help you, I will. And sometimes I'm going to have to tell you that it's only available in the aftermarket and not aftermarket is eBay or whatever it is. But I'll, I'll try to give you what I know. Uh, kind of save you some time. All right, that little washer came on next. The handle was on top of that. Handle nut goes on. I like to do this by hand. I like to thread it so that uh, I don't cross strip it. I grab our wrench. And generally, if you can get the point or dead flat in the uh, either a flat side or the point that nut cap is going to work. Just kind of the way I guess it's designed. Let's see if we caught that one. If not, I'll have to take a the screw and uh, see. Oh, we got it. Sorry, we got lucky twice now. We got the, the stud mounted in there on the second try, and we got the, uh, the point there. Ah, beautiful reel. Beautiful reel. Nice casting wheel if you're into casting these. All right, let's go to the other side, take that spool out, make sure everything else on this side gets the love and attention it deserves. Again, four screws. I'm going to lay them on the table just to make sure that uh, if there is a size difference, I notice them. I'm suspecting I'm going to find the same thing I did on the other side, which is two long ones. Yep, long, longs and shorts. The shorts are not in the cross posts. The longer ones are in the cross posts. So folks ask how long or how frequently should they service the reel. My recommendation is at a minimum do it once a year. That way uh, you keep it fresh for the next season and uh, you don't worry about things drying out or clogging the reel at any given point. And uh, you can fish with confidence without fear that that reel is going to break. If you fish heavy, get that whole spool assembly out. If you fish this heavily, uh, what you want to do is you want to service this maybe at the midpoint of the season. Well, we've got grease on the uh, the bearing there, but otherwise we're in good condition. It's a big braking system here. Again, I'm going to go ahead with the oil here. I'm also going to oil the little moving pieces here for that anti-reverse. Notice on here we have two brakes. If you want to cast far, you keep the brake off, which is what is currently in, so I'm going to leave it that way. Uh, if you want to uh, ensure that uh, you can slow the spool, then it comes out further. All right, that was easy enough on this one. There's not much to do there. We'll just put a little bit of grease onto the stud there. We're also going to put grease onto the main shaft here, which we didn't do when we were uh, setting this up before. So greasing both sides of the spool. I'll go ahead and put the spool back in here. Oh, I got another bearing here that we couldn't access before, so I'm gonna oil this one as well. So we have three ball bearings in this one, it looks like. 
quality reel all around. That's why it spins nicely. If you weren't paying attention before, it's a good time to pay attention. The name is kind of between the cross bars, so that means this piece here is going to go to the top when you go to reinsert. Simple little snap in. Trim ring goes on. It doesn't matter which pieces of the plate the trim ring goes on. Let's do this one in reverse. The long screws go to the cross posts. And the short screws go in between, right? So let's get this other long one here. So this reel replaced the, uh, the Senators, I mean the Senators are still out there, but this one really took over for the Senator 3 out in that category. This is the, uh, the 545, I think, right? Yeah, so they have a smaller series, the 525 is uh, sort of the modern day uh, pen squitter uh, or even the jig master, that kind of frame. All of these are really nice reels because of the ball bearing structure, because of using the, uh, the graphite as a lighter weight one, and all of these are discontinued. <laughs> so if you find one of these in the aftermarket, they didn't have a long run, they had a three or four year run. If you find one of these in the aftermarket, just be aware that the made in the US ones are the first generation, and if it doesn't say made in the USA, or in this case Penn USA, it wasn't. The second series on this one, uh, the GS2s, they were made in uh, China. That's when the production moved over. All right, there you go. This is your 545 pen. I'm going to tighten down on those drags, make sure that they work. They sure do. And then I'm going to back them off. I always recommend that if you don't, uh, if you're not fishing the reel, back that off. And uh, this one's ready to go back to uh, Mashihiro in Japan. So thank you for sending it all the way and giving me the opportunity to show our viewers how to service this reel. And again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you like these videos, please subscribe. And if you are a first responder, if you are essential personnel, if you're in law enforcement, health care, government workers, everybody uh, that's pitching in to uh, help us alleviate this, even the folks that are working on the vaccine and the ones that are going to have to be distributing that one and all the plans you need to make to keep us safe. Thank you for everything that is that you do. So with that, we're going to end. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.